So dirt maps are great and they've got even better since the release of V-Ray 5. So let's take a look at how we can use a dirt map on our materials to add grunge and streaks and just general weathering. So first of all, let's take a look at our wood and let's see how we can add some weathering leaks perhaps coming off this roof and also some weathering to the boards. So I'm just going to zoom in and start an interactive render. And let's open up our material editor as well. So I've closed our material map browser just to give us a bit more space. Um, usually I'd be working on two screens, but we're better off recording on the one. So first thing is we have this wood texture plugged into our material. And I'm just going to pull out of the diffuse. So now we only have the bump map affecting this material. And I'm going to pull out maps, V-Ray, and apply a V-Ray dirt. And I'm going to name it Roof Leaks. And let's change this occluded color to bright red so we can see what effect it's having in here. So we need to wait for the initial pass. And now we can see that we have this ambient occlusion along the roof. So we can add more radius. You can see that it's come further out. And then the distribution also dictates how close together our ambient occlusion is. And we've got different modes down here, and we're going to be using ambient occlusion, inner occlusion, and probably a mix of both of them at some point. So for now, let's leave it on ambient occlusion. And we'll turn streaks ambient on. And let's bring this streak size down to one. So that's the size of the streak. So the bigger the, bigger the streaks are going to be. And we can use these bias. bias um, to dictate which direction this ambient occlusion goes. So if we put one in the Z, it's going to go from top to bottom. And if we zoom out, we'll see that there will be only red where we can kind of go down. So you see on the top of this door and down here. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's where leaks will be. And what else we can do is add in a grunge map and also split it up a little bit more. Um, so we could put in the radius. Let's put in a dent. So this is just going to be black and white. And we can see that that has broken up our dirt. And obviously we can go into the dirt map and we could change the tiling on this. So we could put this onto two. And we can make this a lot less, so it's kind of longer. And that looks quite good. We, obviously, we don't want it to be red and as obvious as that. So what we're going to do now is go over to textures.com. And if we go down here to grunge, we want some kind of like weathered effects. So grunge maps are generally pretty good for this. And something like this will work well, just to give it a bit of variation. So it's not just a solid color. So let's download that. And we can just drag and drop this in, or you could load it up as a bitmap. But now if we plug this into our occluded, the color is going to change from red to now using this grunge map as the texture. So that's how we can add some weathering coming off of the roof and anything in the z-axis. And something else you want to try. So we're just going to delete 
that going into the diffuse. What we're going to do is actually combine these all at the end, but we're just working with one map at a time, so we can just slowly build this up. So let's add another V-Ray Dirt. And again, make it red. I like to make it red so we can definitely see what this map is doing. And this time I'm going to change it to inner occlusion. And it's going to take over a whole scene. So let's, uh, sorry, our whole object. So let's bring that radius down to 20. I'm also going to name this inner boards. So now we can get some weathering in between these boards. So let's turn on inner occlusion streaks. Streaks inner. Zoom in some more. I don't think we're ever going to get this close, but let's see what's happening. We can bring this streak size down to one. Not that I think that's doing all that much. Um, let's add a bias of one as well. So now it's only coming from kind of the top to the bottom. So now we can see we've got dirt in between each of our planks. Um, but again, let's break it up. We can use, let's use a dent map. It's not, I mean, you could use noise or anything you like in here. Anything that's kind of like black and white, cellular. Let's just use the dent map at default, should be all right. We can see that's giving it a lot more variation in the boards or the dirt in between the boards. And let's also plug that bitmap, the grunge map from earlier, into the occluded. We can see we've just added in some dirt between these boards just to mix it up a little bit. So we've got our inner boards, we've got our roof leaks, and we've got our diffuse wood. And now we just want to bring them all together. So let's create a composite map. Now these composites are kind of like Photoshop layers. So we're going to add three because we're going to we've got three maps to add. And something to be aware of is that in the editor, one is at the top and over here, one is at the bottom. And that can be quite confusing. This one is actually how they're laid out. So use this so we can plug directly into layer one. So plug the wood texture into layer one as an instance. And then we'll plug the roof leaks into layer two as an instance. And then we'll plug the inner boards into layer three. And if you've ever used blend uh, layer blends in Photoshop, this is very similar. So we can just put this on multiply and multiply. And let's refresh oh, and also make sure that's plugged into the diffuse. And now we should see our wood and we should also see the streaks coming down from the roof. And we've also got this variation in between the boards. So we've added some weathering to these boards. If you did want to bring down the opacity of one of these, I mean, you could bring, you can change it to 50 and the roof leaks would be less prominent. But again, that's something that I'll probably play with when we come to render the final images. Um, but that's how we can add dirt to the wood boards. Now, something else to be aware of is if we take a look at the door, once that renders a bit more, we'll see that it's actually affecting the whole door. 
and we need to turn on in our inner boards consider the same object only otherwise these biases are going to affect the other wood materials so the great thing about this is now if we go around we've got dirt on all of our boards all of our wooden boards and in the Z we're going to have dirt and in between each plank so that's quite a quick way of getting a material procedurally mapped with dirt so some other places that would be cool to add some dirt is this bottom concrete I think it'll be cool to add some leaks similar to the roof and then also some uh, weathering from the ground so let's do the same again let's find our concrete material and we're going to add a Vero dirt let's make it red and let's call this one top streaks you don't have to name your maps but when it comes to this Vero day it's always nice to know what's going on when you're looking in the material editor so this time let's pump up that radius to like 500 get that distribution to 10 and we only want to have it in the Z so top to bottom we'll have it on ambient occlusion and streaks ambient and now we can see those leaks coming from the top to the bottom and let's bring this streak size right down that's looking pretty good I think we could use this grunge map again I mean you could push it through a color correct as well if you want it um, but we won't worry about that just now let's just plug that into the occluded so it's not bright red And again, you could put in a dent map or something similar, but I think that works quite well. Um, if you did want to break it up, yeah, put a dent map or something like that into the radius to break it up. But I think that looks good for the streaks coming from the top to the bottom. And now let's create one for the bottom to the top. So this time, rather than one, let's have it on minus one, and that will bring our streaks in from the bottom to the top. So that's working quite well. And we want this on streaks ambient. And we'll make the streaks bigger this time. Something like that will look cool. And let's plug in this grunge map as well, which is getting a good run out what it is so there's our bottom dirt and now it's just a matter of bringing all three of our maps together in a composite So I'm going to put our concrete into layer one, top streaks in the middle layer, and then the bottom ones in layer three. 
And this time, let's try overlay. And let's plug this composite into the diffuse. We can see that's quite a heavy uh, weathering. And we're going to get plants and stuff in front of this. So this could look pretty cool. And again, if you did want to bring it down, then feel free to change this opacity. And then finally, I think these roof tiles could do with some dirt on there just to break it up a little bit and add some imperfections. So let's find our roof tile material and we've just got bitmap plugged in there. So let's add the V-Ray dirt map. make it bright red and this one we're going to use ambient and inner and that's really prominent so let's bring down the radius and I'm also going to pump the bias up to like 100 yeah that's a little bit more subtle bring that streak so, sorry, turn the streaks both on. And I'm going to use that grunge map again. I'm just going to hold shift and make a copy of it so we're not just plugging into one and it'll get mixed up. Um, put that into the occluded. Actually, let's, let's do the radius first. So there we go, that looks pretty good. And then we can plug in the occluded color. And that just breaks up our roof material a little bit. So again, let's quickly make a composite. And we want our main material on layer one. And then we'll put our dirt on as an overlay. And we'll plug that into the diffuse. That looks good. So as you can see, the V-Ray Dirt Map is a very powerful map. And it can really help with making our materials look a lot more weathered and just add some variation and imperfections to our materials. Hi guys, and thanks for watching. I hope you found that video useful. This video is actually part of a larger course, so if you think you'd find that useful, then check out the link in the description, and feel free to like and subscribe.